Hello, I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, and I hold the David J. Ellis Chair in Large Animal Clinical Sciences at Michigan State University. Today, we're starting a new series about diagnosing mastitis. And in this uh, episode today, I'm gonna to talk about a really simple concept and describe really what is mastitis. To get started with that, we have to really understand the difference between infection and inflammation. Now, mastitis is caused by a bacterial infection of the udder. It occurs when bacterial exposure at the teat end exceeds that teat's ability to resist infection and bacteria get in and start actively dividing inside the mammary gland. Now, the interesting thing is we never know exactly when that infection has occurred. There's no way we can know because we can't see infection. We diagnose that bacterial infection of the mammary gland based on our ability to recognize the inflammation that occurs after the cow's immune system actually detects that bacterial infection and responds to it. So mastitis is typically a bacterial infection of the udder that we detect and define based on the magnitude of the immune response or the inflammation that that infection causes. Now, mastitis is defined as either subclinical or clinical. And subclinical mastitis means we've got that bacterial infection of the udder, the cow's immune system has responded by sending white blood cells from the bloodstream into the udder to engulf and destroy the bacteria. But we can't see any of that immune response occurring. Subclinical mastitis means the milk looks abnormal, the udder looks abnormal, the cow looks abnormal, but if we take a milk sample, it contains too many somatic cells, meaning that there's an active immune response going on in that udder. In contrast, clinical mastitis occurs when we have that same infection occurs in the mammary gland, but the immune response that occurs subsequent to that infection is large enough that we can see it. And so we have abnormal milk or abnormal milk in a swollen quarter or occasionally abnormal milk in a sick cow. So we define mastitis based on the magnitude of the immune response, not based on understanding exactly when that infection occurred. Now, why does all this matter? Why do we need to know the difference between inflammation and infection? Well, first of all, it's important to remember that most mastitis is subclinical. That means it's invisible unless we test for it. So we need to have mechanisms to detect it. Second thing we need to know is many times that inflammatory response in a healthy cow is actually successful. So not all cases of clinical or subclinical mastitis actually require antibiotic therapy to cure. Finally, we also have to recognize that inflammation is actually nonspecific. We can't look at the mastitis, which we see as the inflammation, and know what bacteria caused it. We have to do a separate test for that. And we have to understand that inflammation often lasts longer than infection. We can have a successful inflammatory response that kills all the bacteria, but the milk typically will still remain normal for three to five days. So you can't tell if an antibiotic's been successful just by looking at the milk. All right, let's recap. Mastitis is typically caused by a bacterial infection of the udder, but we never know when that infection occurred. We detect it based on recognition of the immune response. To know how to prevent it and to know whether or not an antibiotic is necessary to treat it, it's not enough just to detect that inflammatory response. We actually have to do some culturing or PCR testing in order to be able to define the bacterial cause so we use the right therapy. And in the um, other parts of the series, we'll be talking about some of those tests.